In this video, we've got a full in-depth review for you on the Tamron 20mm f2.8, as usual breaking down every aspect of this lens to determine whether or not you should be considering it. Let's get started. Welcome back guys and today yes we are looking at the Tamron 20mm f2.8 this little guy right here and like I said I wasn't overly excited about this thing when it was announced but now I am. I gotta say that this thing is pretty awesome for a lot of reasons and if you haven't considered it after watching this you might. So guys here's some specs for you of this lens if you haven't seen anything to do with it so far and if you haven't seen one of my videos my name's Stefan Malik. I do a lot of photography and filmmaking news reviews and tutorials so if you do like this video you like this type of content and it helps you out consider hitting that like and subscribe button and join the community. So right before we dive into build I wanted to just kind of chat about who this lens was for. It's not a professional lens by any means. This is going to be used by a beginner to intermediate and it's going to be more primarily for a photographer rather than somebody who shoots a ton of video. So obviously this isn't the fastest lens ever made being an f2.8 but it does have some awesome qualities that might make you think twice about it. So having said that guys let's dive right into the build and features of this lens. Okay so let's have a closer look at an unbox and the features. What you get in the box is your typical paperwork, the lens, and a lens hood. And that's it. The build of the lens is decent. It has a plastic or composite material, very similar looking and feeling to the Tamron 28-75 and 17-28. Obviously, as you can see, the size is fantastically small, measuring only 3 and 3 quarter inches long with the lens hood installed, and only 2 and a half without. It also weighs only 220 grams or just under half a pound. On the front you'll find 67mm filter threads, which is what Tamron seems to be sticking with with a lot of its recent lenses. One aspect of this lens that I don't care for is its moving focusing element and housing, which does extend as you focus which may lead to issues later on when it comes to weather sealing. On the back you'll find a sturdy metal mount, as well I'm happy to report that Tamron has included a little rubber gasket. A few other things worth mentioning, this lens has no buttons or switches, and the focus ring is nice and grippy, and turns easily. All in all, the build is decent, but not extraordinary, and I give it 3.5 stars. Next let's talk value. Coming in at an MSRP of $350 US dollars, currently on sale for $299 US dollars, this lens has incredible value. Comparing it to say the Sony 20mm f1.8, sure it's optically better and has more features, but it's also currently three times more expensive. There's also the Sigma 20mm f1.4, which might have great value compared to the Sony, but it's also three times more than the Tamron. With more and more options becoming available to us, it's great to see, and we'll get into performance here in a second, but as far as value is concerned for me, this thing has phenomenal value and I give it four and a half stars. Okay, so let's check out the performance of this lens next, and as usual, we'll start with the autofocus. Now this is one area of this lens where it's not the best. As you can hear here, it does have some audible clicks and ticks. It's definitely not the fastest, and it can hunt quite a bit. And as well, it does suffer from focus breathing quite badly. For these reasons, I'm not gonna recommend it for video work that much, but for photos, if you are patient, it does work adequately. And do keep in mind this is a $300 to $350 lens, so don't expect miracles. Moving forward, one of the aspects of this lens that I love and is fantastic for is its minimum focus distance and 1 to 2 macro reproduction capabilities. This is going to let you get up close and personal with your subjects, giving it some interesting character and making it quite versatile in what you're able to shoot. I have a lot of fun with this lens and shoot everything from environmental portraits to up close nature shots to landscapes and anything I can think of. Wherever you're going to bring it, it's going to have a use. And being an ultra wide lens, you get a different perspective that's great for storytelling. Okay, so now let's check out the optics and sharpness of this lens. And I'm happy to say that definitely in the center of the image is razor sharp and into the corners isn't actually that bad either. But let's talk about the elephant in the room here that is the distortion with this lens. 
it is out of control, probably some of the worst that I've ever seen. And really, it doesn't really go away at this point. There's no profile correction. So you can kind of play with it a little bit depending on if you can find something that's gonna work, but it is absolutely horrible. Vignetting, however, is pretty well controlled throughout pretty much all of the aperture range as well. But for the most part, if you're not gonna be too concerned with the corner sharpness and the edge getting a little bit funny because of the distortion, well, this thing is phenomenally sharp. And for me, great optically where it matters. As far as chromatic aberration goes, you will find some from time to time, especially in the corners, but honestly, it's well controlled and not that bad. The bokeh of this lens is actually quite nice, especially when you're using its macro capabilities. Stopping down a bit does make its seven bladed aperture quite apparent, but for me, it's actually quite pleasing and I enjoy it. Here's a few more shots I took for you to be the judge. So looking at performance as a whole, like I said, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this lens for video shooters because of its focused breathing, as well as its autofocus noise and speed. So for video, I give it about three stars, but for photography, which is my main use out of this lens, I give it four stars. So wrapping up, I think this is a great lens for a photographer looking for a wide angle lens that doesn't break the bank. It's incredibly sharp, it has a great size and weight, decent autofocus, and awesome macro light capabilities making this lens extremely fun. As always, here's my personal pros and cons for this lens. And rating it as a whole, taking into account everything we've talked about, I give it four stars. If you're a subscriber, you also know that I like to rate things on a scale from never think about again to consider to definitely buy. And in this case, if you are looking for an inexpensive, great size and weight, decent performing ultra wide prime lens, I'd strongly consider this one. So there you go guys, there's my take and review on the 20 millimeter F 2.8 from Tamron. If you wanna pick this lens up, I'll leave affiliate links down below guys. If you found this video helpful and you wanna become part of the community, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, drop all your questions and your comments down below. And like always make mistakes, be yourself and get out there and take some more pictures. See you next time.